So everybody, welcome to System Crafters Live. I'm David Wilson, and we're back again with another Friday stream where we get together as a community and talk about whatever weird topic I've come up with. And this week is going to be super weird. Not really. Uh, sorry, I'm a little bit punchy because we were just you know joking around in the uh, Matrix IRC chat, which is a lot a lot of fun. So uh, let's see. Today, what we're going to do is spend a little time writing some Guile scheme code to try and prototype a true graphical installer for GNU Geeks. Now, I don't know if anybody else has tried this already. I've talked to, um, man, my mind just went blank right now. Uh, Jocelyn from uh, one of the contributors to GNU Geeks about this in the past. I know that he's been working on uh, installer related stuff, uh, but I don't know if anybody's actually tried it yet. I figured why not just you know give it a shot and see how far we can get. Obviously, in a two-hour stream, we're not going to make huge progress, but uh, worth just uh, giving it a shot and seeing what we can do. I mean, the, the most important thing to me is just getting a chance to write some scheme code and also to see how we can write a GTK-based UI using Guile Scheme, because I think that might be pretty interesting. Uh, let's say hello to some folks who are here already. Uh, Summer, Abu, uh, Appenzell, uh, oh boy, Summer's writing uh, Greek in here. Yasu David, Ine, Iperoho, Naine, Ido. Okay, thank you. Great. Uh, let's see. Uh, Case is here. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, EG or Edgy, sorry. Uh, Mark Owen, uh, Fikri, Fade. Yes, and once again, we get another uh, Greek phrase here. Thank you very much for being here today, folks. I appreciate it. Uh, let me know. Let, let's get started off on the right fit this time. Is the screen okay? Is it blurry or is it good? Hey, Ashraz. Hello, Gun. Bionic Battlefish. I think the screen should be fine. Chat GPT. Looks good? Okay. All right, good. Glad for that. Cool. So let's get into it. So uh, this week, not too many updates. I've been super busy, uh, so I uh, haven't had much time to do anything really. But uh, we're going to get started and uh, talk about Emacs Conf 2023. So it's been announced now that e Emacs Conf 2023 is happening, which is not really a big surprise because, you know, it happens every year. But they put out the call for proposals for talks. And uh, if you have not spoken at uh, Emacs Conf before, or if, even if you haven't been there before, you should check it out. But I highly, rec highly recommend that um, all of you, if you're interested in giving a short talk about Emacs, uh, definitely submit a proposal to this. A uh, few of us have given talks at Emacs Comp before. I have, Case has, I know a few other people from the community have. So uh, definitely um, consider giving a talk. It's not so scary. In fact, I think they're often pre-recorded, so you'll get a chance to like do it uh, not under pressure of having to do everything perfectly. So if you want to like pre-record, let's see, ideally talks will be pre-recorded so you can script and edit them as tightly as you want. Um, I'm guessing they all will be pre-recorded. That's what I was told to do in the past. So anyway, the, the options are to do like a five to 10 minute lightning talk or to do a 20 minute talk. They were had They had options for longer talks in the past. I think they got rid of that mainly because, well, I don't know why, but my guess is because it's harder for people to fill the full time slot and maybe it's easier to just pack in a bunch of 20 minute talks, but um, definitely worth giving that a shot if you're interested. Ashra says a case of ducks, how to get all your quacky packages in a row. Yeah, something like that. I see that uh, Dave is using Twitch today. Hey, Dave. So uh, hold on. What's Case saying? It could be my connection. Getting a little stuttering. Okay, hopefully it's it's you and not me. Because if it's me, then we got real problems. Hello to Zero Bug. Okay. So uh, I don't know yet whether I'm going to be um, uh, submitting a proposal yet. I haven't really thought about what I would give a talk on. Um, but I might do one. We'll see. Uh, Edgy says, is there any chance that I can uh, suggest a video about remote development? Maybe so. Yes. Uh, Dave says, I wasn't sure which is the official stream. Seems like it's YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, YouTube is technically the official stream just because I like going straight to um, uh, YouTube. But uh, Twitch is fine too. 
So um, Fikr says, right now your camera is grainy. Yes, that's because I'm wearing a very bad color shirt of shirt for a green screen. My shirt is almost the same color as a green screen. So you're seeing like sparkles because it, it can't decide whether my shirt is a green screen or not, which is great. I, I didn't think about that before I sat down here. Let me see. Hold on. I don't know if it's any better now. Could be worse. But yes, the graininess is probably because of... Uh... Yes, green screen woes. It is, indeed. I'm very sparkly today. Fantastic. Anyway, that is the call for, uh, for proposals for Emacs Conf. I should put on a whole green shirt. I should probably just like turn off my entire camera so I don't have to expose my bald head. I look glittery, yes. That's because I'm so excited to write some scheme code today. So yes, submit a proposal. I'm gonna be checking on all of you to make sure you submitted your proposals. So uh, make sure you get that done for the end of next week. Otherwise, you're gonna be in trouble. Like I'm at Studio 54, man, I don't know about that. All right, so like I was saying before, today we're gonna do a little bit of an experiment. Um, I personally think that Geeks needs a uh, more user-friendly installer. So if you've ever tried to install Geeks system before, you've probably seen the graphical installer, which is really like an in curses app. It's like a terminal app that has some UI-like um, appearance, but it's, a, it's basically a terminal application. And uh, while it, it's fine, it works well, you know, you can actually get the, the job done with it. I made a whole video showing how to install Geeks using that UI. But um, I feel like it's not really welcoming to most potential users of GNU Geeks because you get dropped into this weird screen. It's, it's not even like a terminal uh, where you, you go in. It's sort of like a, an in-curse app, so it just seems kind of weird. Anyway, um, I would like to try and make a GTK GTK-based Geeks installer so that there's a more familiar experience where you can click buttons and, you know, fill things in uh, in a way that people are comfortable with so that uh, there's a better overall installation experience. And I've been thinking for a while about like what it would be like to write one. And I considered using this framework called uh, Calamaras, which is a pretty commonly used installer framework for Linux distributions but it is written in C++ and I think it, a lot of the modules are written in Python and it's kind of geared towards the typical Linux distribution, not like something like GNU Geeks where you don't use like user add or add user to create user accounts in the system. You actually write out your uh, scheme code for your system configuration and then apply that at the end of the, I guess, the process of trying to install the system. So. I felt like, you know, trying to reuse Calamaras for this process would require a lot of uh, rewriting of things that Calamaras already does. So I, so I kind of decided why not just try to write one from scratch and also use the built-in modules that Geeks already has uh, for doing things like partitioning disks, uh, getting the user locale, um, getting information about user accounts, etc. So there's already a lot of stuff in the Geeks code base for uh, the installation flow, we might be able to reuse a lot of that and then just put a GTK based UI on top. Um, there is a Guile Scheme library or module called Guile GI, which is kind of interesting because it dynamically produces um, Guile Scheme functions or modules even based on the schemas of the uh, gnome objects that comprise i don't know what what are they what are they called I don't know, there's there's some object schema g object right so there's a g object schema where you can have objects that are defined i guess using like an xml format or something and uh guile gi can take that schema and then produce scheme functions and data types for interacting with gtk and other um glib interfaces i'm not an expert on this stuff so i'm probably saying some of these things wrong uh, point being that um, this seems like a pretty good library for writing graphical apps. And you'll see in just a second that it's not too many lines of code necessary to actually start one. So uh, we'll, we'll give that a shot and see how well it works. Uh, but for now, my plan is to prototype this new installer specifically for the Crafted Geeks project that I just started working on, um, mainly because the idea behind Crafted Geeks is, is that it should be easier for someone to get started with Geeks by using it. You should have a nice graphical installation experience, and then the actual um, configuration format should be simpler 
so that someone doesn't have to be a geeks expert just to set up their system for the first time. It should be easy to just put together some commonly used configuration pieces and have a nice system more or less out of the box. But uh, this work, if it actually proceeds, if I do enough work to actually make it, you know, install a system correctly, my ultimate goal would be to upstream it to Geeks or to make it available to Geeks somehow so that the official Geeks distribution can use it. And also to generalize it so that other Geeks-based distributions can use that installer and then at the end be able to produce their own conf configuration style uh, for the system that they're deploying. So there's RDE by Andrew Tropin that could possibly use this. There's Crafty Geeks, obviously. And there's probably going to be other Geeks-based distributions because it's so easy to make one with Geeks. So why not have a single graphical installation um, UI and wizard effectively that could be used in multiple distributions that are all sort of geeks based. I think it's a good idea. Dave says a graphical installer would, would be wonderful. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be very difficult. In fact, I think that um, if we are to focus on writing a, a GTK based app and then have the installer image just launch, just like log in directly to a Sway session and launch that installer, should be a good experience. I think it should um, should be good. Uh, Dave says, RDE just made a new release that has some sort of graphical thing. I saw something about that in release notes, but I don't know what that is. So I, I don't know if they've got a graphical installer or if it's just like a live CD situation. Uh, live CD is fine though, because it probably has Emacs running, so. Uh, Tuxdoc says, Vanilla OS has a beautiful installer using GTK if you need inspiration. It's probably based on Calamaras because that's what a lot of uh, distros are using. Let's see what else people are saying in the chat. David is a vampire confirmed. Yeah, I'm not uh, cool enough to be a vampire. Let's see. Retro is in. Okay. Uh, Parni, Parni uh, Kapori. Sorry if I butcher your name. Uh, one of the projects on my back burner is a more typical live ISO for geeks with GUI environment plus installer plus some lever level of hardware support. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, Geeks already has an image for a live CD. Uh, and I've, I've made a fork of that with the non-Geeks repo. Uh, let's see, Geeks live. Uh, but it's nothing special. It just boots into a system. Where is it? Uh, is that it? Geeks live image. Yeah, basically just taking the uh, original configuration and adding the... Oh, is this for the VM? At any rate, there is something like that, but maybe maybe what you have in mind is better. Shabash says, uh, "Sorry, I'm late for class. This is this is not very good as a class, I would say." Uh, Appenzel says, "Any specific reason to use GTK three over GTK four? Not really. I mean." probably could use GTK, GTK 4. Uh, just, it's pretty new, right? I don't know what the differences are. Does, uh, let's see. Come on, geeks. Looking for GTK. Okay, there's four here, so maybe we will be using GTK 4. We'll have to, we'll have to see about that. Vanilla OS installer is a custom installer using GTK 4. Cool. I haven't seen it, so... Uh, let's see. Let's say GTK4 then. We'll see how it goes. So I've already created a PR for uh, a branch for this work on uh, Codeberg. If you want to go over and check that out, it's there's nothing there really. It's basically just the um, the necessary manifest and uh, a starter file that came as an example from the Guile G GI library. So. Uh, if you want to like try this out at some point or maybe contribute or just leave comments, you can go to this link, uh, codeberg.org slash systemcrafters slash crafted dash geeks slash pulls slash 14. There's a link in the show notes uh, so you can go uh, check it out there. But uh, this is something that I would definitely like uh, help on. So if people want to write some UI code using Guile Scheme, using GTK, definitely drop by and uh, discuss it with me because I'm not going to be able to write this whole thing by myself. Uh, Crafted Geeks is meant to be a community project, so I'm trying to get the basic shape of things in place and validate that it's possible, and then we can all start hacking on it together. 
Okay. Summer says, I'm a bad girl in the back of the room smoking cigarettes with my feet on the desk. Yeah. Well, you know, it's okay. If you heckle me, that'll be fine. Because there, there'll be plenty to heckle. I'll just be uh, banging around in circles trying to figure things out here. So, goals. Uh, we will probably not get to all of these, but this is sort of what I have in mind. Uh, and, you know, it'll be nice to show that it's possible if we are able to make some progress. Uh, first of all, is to create a basic installation wizard flow for all the steps in the install process. We'll have to take a look at the Geeks code base and see what the steps are there because I forgot. Um, then minimally step sketch out the first few pages of the installation flow if we have time. Um, we're going to use a program called Glade. Did I mention that here? Yeah, uh, there's a program called Glade that you can use for designing GTK based user interfaces. Um, I'm not going to use the output of that directly. I'm just going to use it to sort of figure out how to design an interface quickly and then look at the output because it writes out XML and then translate that over to Guile Scheme, basically. So uh, we're going to give that a shot on some of the first few pages. We probably won't get very far, but that's okay. Uh, and then at the end of the flow, it'd be nice to create a basic Crafted Geeks configuration from whatever the configuration was. We'll see if we can make it that far. And then also to produce a minimal installer image, which launches this installation UI in a Sway session. That won't be very difficult. I kind of know what to do for that, but um, we'll have to see. And I've got some links here as uh, resources. I'll have to check this one to see if that they have something equivalent for GTK4. Must be there. Deprecated, wow. So what's the new thing then? I love it whenever something is deprecated and they don't tell you what to use instead. GTK Assistant deprecated. This also says deprecated since 3.2. What does that mean? Oh, just some fields. Okay, fine. Oh, interesting. Mm, assistant. Okay, GTK4 migration guide. That's probably going to be useful. Uh, assistant. Adapt to GTK stack. G GTK Assistant and GTK Notebook API changes. Child meta objects, great. G object set. Okay. You know, we'll see if we can uh, actually use GTK 4. We'll give it a shot. Three might be easier though. All right, so uh, let's just get started. I'm gonna show you what I've got so far. Let's uh, pop open a V term here. Okay, and then we're gonna pop over to uh, pro whoops, projects code, uh, crafted geeks. Come on now. And uh, let's see, geeks shell m manifest sem. I'm not going to run it pure. That was fast. It must have already been installed. So then, guile uh, modules crafted installer main. Come on. Nope. There we go. So basic hello world application with GTK3, at least. It's got a little hello world button here that I can click. And uh, if I were to make that floating, then you can see it's kind of small. But uh, at least we can see that it works. So let's take a look at the code for that. Modules, crafted, installer, main, right? So this is using the GI library, like I mentioned before. This is just a a wrapper library for all the GTK and G object libraries, etc. Um, I'm using an example that is supposed to make things a bit more fast because otherwise it has to scan all the schemas for all of the G object interfaces and generate them. So uh, instead of doing that, I'm being more explicit here with the certain things that I want to use. Um, we'll probably have to add to those as we go. 
Um, but what we have here is a main function to find main, which creates an application object. Uh, this G, Guile GI library is using the Goops system inside of uh, Guile. If you don't know what Goops is, it is an object-oriented programming module for Guile Scheme, which is based on the general meta object protocol pattern, sort of like what uh, Common Lisp has is as a CLOS. See ya, Ashras. So um, the Guile Goops section of the manual will tell you more about that. It's pretty cool. You know, it's, yeah, time to get goopy. That's, that's for sure. I know that uh, Dave's new game development library, I uh, can't remember the name, Catbird, uses goops for sure. So um, yeah, this, there's a lot of information here to digest if you're interested in how you might do object-oriented programming in Guile Scheme. We're not going to get into too much detail on the ins and outs of that. We're just going to use it today. So uh, we're making an uh, instance of the GTK, GTK application class and passing in an application ID of org.gtk.example. I guess we could do like org.gnu.geeks.installer, maybe something like that. I don't know, right? And then uh, this connect is uh, connecting to signals. So we're connecting to a signal. We're connecting to a signal on the app object we just created. It's a signal called activate. And then we're registering a callback for that signal called activate callback, which is this function that's defined here. Then we are running the application, uh, passing along the command line parameters, which you can access uh, as a list by using this command dash line function that's uh, provided by Guile. So not too much code necessary to at least get an application started. And we just run main at the end. Uh, then this activate callback is uh, run in the context of the GTK, GTK application that got created uh, so that you're in basically the, the thread and event loop for uh, starting up the UI. And here we create a window using the same kind of um, class initialization for GTK application window with the application referenced and also the width and height and the title. So how about this? Uh, Geeks installer, we'll set that. Maybe we will say tw uh, 1280 by 720 to make it more of a 16 by nine type uh, size. And um, that should be good for our first couple steps there. Then also we're creating a button box, which I'm not sure what a button box is for because I haven't really done much GTK programming, but we'll take a look at that in a minute. And then we also uh, create a button that goes into the button box is saying that the button box is the parent and the label is hello world. So let's just change that up, excuse me. And uh, also we see here, there's another connect call, which is connecting to a signal. We're connecting to a signal on button called clicked. And we're wiring that to something called print hello, which is defined up here. And similarly, we have, um, oh, apparently it's connecting more than one handler for the clicked signal. The second one is a Lambda that just destroys the window. So that's how that window closes. I'll just go ahead and uh, hi, or get rid of that one. We don't want that. And then show all windows. The last thing that happens in this function just to show that window. Okay. So let's pull the V term back up and I'll just run it again. And we can see uh, that break my system is here. And by clicking on it, it doesn't actually, um, wow. What is the deal with the, uh, did I, oh, ha, ha, ha. wrong dimensions. Great. Just had them flipped. Why would someone put default height above default width in something like that? Because it's going to trip up anyone who's used to, uh, wow, is that so big? I guess the resolution I have on this machine is a little bit large. Um, what's another, was it like 960? So, uh, 1280 times 0 0.25, no, no, 75, how about that? 960, all right, same thing for 720. 960 by 540, let's try that. Probably for a, a bigger screen, you would want a bigger window, but that's what we'll go with for right now. 
800 by 600. 800 by 600 is uh is the default. Uh, yeah, that's more squarish though. I kind of like a wider uh, screen. Dave says, this is using G Golf. I'm flipping between the stream and a PR and I'm working on it, I missed it. No, we're using Guile GI, which is probably a newer library. All right, so we've got that. Um, so now let's uh, fire up Glade. And uh, it's kind of a nice app. It's, uh, you know, kind of aesthetic. We're going to create a new project for that. And uh, I'm going to look at the top levels list. And in here, there is the GTK Assistant. And I think this is the one that I want because it's basically like a wizard flow for um, things like installers or anything that has a kind of a process to it. Can I make this smaller? There you go. Thank you. Okay, so um, this assistant has a few pages in it. There's a, this label page, content page, confirmation page. That, that's three pages that are in here. There can be more of these. In fact, if I, can I duplicate this? Copy, unable to paste to the selected parent. Can I paste by right clicking? Paste, okay. I don't know how to move these things around though. It should be possible to, to reorder these and it doesn't seem like it. So I don't know what the deal is. But anyway, um, if I were to save this out, let's say I save this into um, UI prototype. I'll put this in. Let's just put it right here. And then I'll go open that file up. UI prototype.glade. And this is just an XML file. So um, we can see here that it has an object of class GTK assistant, and it's, it's basically telling us that it's creating objects of a particular class type, which is good because that makes it easy for us to translate this over to Guile scheme code. So uh, we have a property being set called can focus, which is false, don't know why, but I'll just try to replicate that. Um, and also you see that they're, they're not creating a window, they're just starting with an assistant. So it must just be like a whole uh, self-contained thing. In fact, if we go to this top levels list, we can see GTK window. So, um, or G GTK application window, I believe is the one that we used in the end. So we can start with a GTK assistant. Um, let's take a look back at our code and see if we can just uh, change the code to use that instead. GTK assistant, and I'll have to add that up here as well. Just to make sure it's available. And now I can run the installer again. Um, okay, cool. It says like a cancel and a next here. I don't like the fact that the buttons are up here at the top, but okay, we'll, we'll go with that for now. You know, it might be possible also to, um, can I not close this window now? Hello, unclosable window. It might be possible to directly translate that as well. We could probably, I mean, not in the stream today, but in general, one could potentially write a uh, scheme function that will take this XML and translate it over to scheme instead, which might be kind of interesting, actually. I don't see why not, because really you're instantiating the exact same objects with the same properties, so should be fine. So can focus, uh, there's ch children here. I'm curious about, let's see. I probably need to open up a REPL so I can experiment with this a little bit. I'm trying to think of the best way to do it. So maybe if I create another module, let's see, UI.SCM and uh, define, whoops, define module, crafted installer created uh, UI. And let's pull in the use modules here as well. We'll have to uh, straighten this up a little bit. Oh, come on. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, Lispy is on. I'm not used to using Lispy anymore, so now it's just gonna totally wreck my flow. Okay, so. That's good. 
And we can probably uh, pull over some of these things here as well. We'll start with that. And also, uh, the main part we could leave, I think. Maybe creating the application could be a function. So let's try that. So um, define, create, installer, application. Is there anything I want to pass into that? No. So I can really just do... Yeah, I probably need to pass in the handler. So activation procedure. Okay. Let's turn off copilot. So we need to do that same let. <laughs> I don't know what case is arguing with someone about in the chat. Okay, so we got the Geeks installer thing here, and then we're gonna set up the same, um, hmm, run app command line. Okay, so when we run the app, actually, let's do this differently. We probably just need to replicate this whole thing. So let's do this. We're not going to do that part. We're going to say run installer. Me, me, what did I do? Yeah, okay, this is fine. I, no, we don't need a main. So we're also going to um, pull in crafted installer UI. Don't really care about the hello world uh, signal at the moment. We'll take this, drop it in here. Okay. So now we've got all this pulled into this library and it's not going to get launched automatically. I don't want it to get launched automatically. So what I want to do is run a REPL. Let me think about this for a second. You probably run the pre-installation environment script. Yeah. So am I still in the shell? All right. Um, yeah, pre-instant env environment, uh, guile repl. Nope. That's my mistake. I should just type guile. There we go. Okay, so now uh, use crafted uh, Installer UI. Define module, unknown keyword, really? Oh, GI of use modules. That's strange. Okay, it's there. Oh, use module, that's my mistake. Okay, cool. Let's go back, do that again. Okay, so that looks good. Now, why did I do that? Because I want to look at the um, GTK Assistant. I need to uh, figure out how to do introspection. So let's take a look at that. Um, introspection. I want to see what properties are on this type. Slots. That's what they're called. Class direct slots. Okay, so let's see if I can do that. I need to pull in the goops library first, I think. Uh, use goops. 
no code for module. Um, it's called class A. What's the deal? Goops is uh, CLOS, effectively. Oh, oop, Goops. Great module name. <laughs> Use oop, Goops. Uh, and I want to say class direct slots of uh, GTK assistant. It's unbound. It shouldn't be unbound because there's a symbol here. Unless I did something wrong. Why no geyser? Mjolnir says, are you excited for the big celebration tomorrow? I have no idea what celebration we're talking about. I don't live in the real world. I live in my computer. Yes, why am I not using geyser? Because uh, I have to set up the environment and I don't feel like tweaking geyser right now. Uh, symbol was in a lexical context. Ah, actually, you're right. Um, that's what we should do. How do we do that? There's a command to go into a module. Uh, help, help module in. Uh, was it crafted installer UI? Mm, whoops. Change modules. Let's do a uh, comma M instead. Okay. Crafted installer UI. Yeah. Uh, good call out fade. Now let's try this. Uh, okay. I got to import the module again. The oop goops. Come here. There you are. Hey, okay. So I don't like that, but maybe it's because it's inheriting things. Is there just a class slots? Slots. Okay, here we go. GTK assistant. Cool. Uh, value ref unref. Uh-huh. Maybe I need to do an instance. Oops, all goops. Dave says, do you need to do load by name to get the relevant classes methods? Do I? Ah, uh, probably not. I mean, I've got it already in the module, so hopefully it should work. Tomorrow is Canadian Independence Day. What else? I don't know, man. I, I'm not Canadian, so I don't remember what the, the day is, but happy Canadian Independence Day to the Canadians. Okay, so... Need to, we need to make some progress here. I've already wasted some nice time. Let me try this. I'm going to uh, define test and just drop in this thing. Unbound variable app. Fantastic. There's got to be a way to get the instance. Probably not. Because it's a meta object protocol, if you ask for the slots of the class type, it's gonna give you the uh, the meta class slots. So that's not what I want. I need the, the slots of um, the instance. Instance creation and slot access. Make, yeah, of course. Okay. All right, so let's do, let's do that then. Uh, launch installer. I don't want to launch it, but I will make one. So I can I just copy this part here. I'll paste it in and then define app. Okay, let's redefine that uh, assistant again. Wow. It killed the REPL. That's fun. I think it's because I'm looking at the, the class. Because the class is an instance of a meta class. So you're getting the slots of the, the class, the, uh, the instance of the class type, not the instance of the GTK, GTK application, or sorry, GTK assistant type. All right, let's just do this in here then. <laughs> Majorly successful right now. Uh, and I'll do the same thing here. Guile um, modules. 
Come on. Crafted installer main.scm. Let's just try that. Whoops. Unbound variable, fine. Uh, yes, because it did not export that. Let's say define public. Uh, unbound variable print hello. Yes, that's right, because I got rid of that. Okay, now we're back. Still doesn't close on its own, but that's okay. Uh, let's do this. Right about here, we'll just do some uh, print line debugging. I, let's let's see. I think when we look at the instance of the assistant, we're going to see the slots. So um, display. Or is it better to use format? Format T. I forgot the right syntax for this. Uh, and then I want to say class slots of um, window. Unbound, yeah, okay. Let's uh, drop that other module in. Oop, goops. Not a class, whoops. Okay, so that's interesting. Describe C, ooh. Like that. So instead of trying to format this, let's run uh, describe uh, window. <laughs> that cannot be. That cannot be. Okay, so I guess it, what, what it returned. The first time was right. Okay, uh, Dave says class slots is showing you the slots that would be on the instances of that class. All right. All right, let's think why it wouldn't be doing other things because there's got to be other stuff. It's not just value ref and unref. There have to be what else? Oops, let's go into the XML file, UI prototype. There's children. I guess I need to figure out how to do that. So uh, let's see, Guile GI, GitHub. There's a, a documentation page for this somewhere. Okay, it's right here. Hmm. It's kind of weird though, because it uh, would it not like I, I feel like the uh, the slots are kind of represented here, right? Like default width, default height. Let's try. Uh... Oh well, I'm, I'm putting that in the wrong place. That's one thing. Let's describe what app has in it. It's like the same. Same. You might be right, Dave. I might not be able to introspect on that, which is a little bit annoying. So then let's just go back to the docs for the assistant class. Uh, let's put it back on GTK3 because I'm a little concerned about what I saw with GTK4, unless... Actually, no, 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 no. Let's do this, let's do this. Let's try making this four and see what happens. I'm just curious to see if there's any uh, observable difference. Uh, oh, GTK4 not found? Hmm. Fine. We'll stick with uh, three for now. Presumably there are methods that get at the relevant GTK data. There must be. So, uh, properties, pages, and do we see that represented? We saw children. Child, child, child.
Uh, methods. Methods. Get page, add page. Mm. Insert page. Append page. Yeah, okay, there's an append page method. Using virtual slots to make this more usable? Yes, indeed. So um, we could go back into the REPL. Because what I do need to find out is like what methods does it actually generate for this? So um, let's let's go. Bum, 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 bum. Whatever. M crafted installer UI. Okay. So now, um, not get anything there. G. Okay. Get some some defines. I can see those. You know, maybe I shouldn't do it this way. I think, um, tutorial. I think we should just use the type libs uh, directly because otherwise we might be missing a lot of stuff. So let's try this first. Let's not go with the more targeted approach at first because I think that we're causing ourselves problems here. Let's just take that out. And we can restart the REPL and then we can go back into that module. Okay, that wasn't that long. I mean, why are we complaining about? No, GT, hey, here we go. There's some stuff. So GK alternative, hmm. Well, maybe we could try to create an instance of these objects again and see what we see. Still the same. I'm just trying to see how to add children to this uh, assistant. Because in the XML, there appears to be children, which are these labels, which is kind of strange. But I think that's just um, what you could see them as pages effectively. But it's not clear through this uh, interface from uh, Gal GI, how I'm supposed to do that. Generate documentation. Can be invoked through guild. Yeah, it'd be nice if I could do that, but GTK object children. I guess there's a container. That makes sense that it would be a container. We go to the documentation of assistant. Uh, not, not a pen page. We want to see the type itself and not in four either. Let's go to three. This derives from window, which I'm guessing is a container. Or not. GTK bin. Who knows what that means? Well, let's see. It doesn't seem to complain when I'm giving it things like default width, default height. Let's try to run the program again and see if it um, does what I'm asking. Oops. S has no signal in S. What are we talking about? Launch installer. Connect one. We're not using, okay, we're using connect here. That's fine. App activate, launch installer UI. Okay. H 
A children. Okay. Is that apropos? Cool. Let's see, uh, flow box, tree model, min children, container. Okay, so maybe there's some prefixing, assistant colon. Ah, there's the methods, assistant colon. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so now we've uncovered the mystery of how we can find methods for types. So we can append a page with assistant append page. Let's take a look at that uh, method then and see what it tells us. Appends a page to the assistant and that is a widget. So it could be anything. All right. So then let's give it a shot. Uh, we can put a label apparently because that's what we saw before. There's not a better way to get the list of all types here. Oh, well, you know. Let's just do this. Uh, label. Visible can focus, property name, label, translatable, sure. Not sure about the whole packing bit here, but that's okay. All right. So now that we have the window, we are going to, oh, well, there's parent here, actually. Maybe that is one of the keys. Let's try this. Uh, page one, make GTK uh, label. And it is label. Not sure if that's right. And also we'll set the parent to window. It actually makes sense, to be honest. We'll get rid of the button box and the button. And then we can do another page, page two. Okay. Let's see what that does. Oh, I really upset it. At the kill V term. That's very nice. All right, so let's see if we can pull back what we were doing. Great. Interesting. Uh, yeah, I hope it's nice. I hope it's nice. It it might be better, but uh, right now I'm you know it's, it's some rather strange complaints is given me. Does this need to be public also? It can't be right. Oh wait, 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 wait. That's not right. Or is it? Let me see what my original um, example code was. So, okay, the callback received um, the app as the first parameter. Run app command line. I don't know why connect is failing in this case. Launch installer UI. So I think it's, um, oh, okay, all right. Wait, it's saying that there's no activate signal in GTK application, which does not seem right to me. It seems like the, is what we were doing before. Let's go back to what we were doing before. And also, I'll have to drop in label here. Huh, okay. Uh, next button is not working. 
which is kind of interesting. But the, the it works label is definitely showing up as a child based on what we just did. I don't know if that's the right way for it to work, though. It seems like we might need to use the real APIs for that. Um, let me go back into the REPL. I'm curious. Okay, so um, we're going to go into that module. Okay, cool. So we actually do get all the methods. That's nice. So we can just pull in only the stuff that we need. Apparently, whenever you pull in everything, it gives a, an issue when, when trying to launch the application. So let's just not do that. Cool. Oh, don't kill Emacs. All right, let's think about this for a second. It seems that we're supposed to be able to just launch a GTK assistant and it's a window. So it, it inherits from everything that windows provide. It controls what buttons show and to make sensitive based on what it knows about the page sequence. Creates a new GTK assistant, uh, adds a widget to the action area. Okay, so there's, there's a little bit more control to this whole thing. Uh, erases the visited page history so the back button is not shown. All right, so let's try doing a, a pen page instead. Did we see that method in the list that showed up? Yeah, pen page. So instead of uh, creating things that are children of the window, let's instead create the pages. I'm not going to say parent. I don't know if that's going to be the right thing, but we'll see. Come on. Okay. Now we have page one, page two, uh, assistant, append page, page one. And then page two. Oh, let's see what happens. Okay, no applicable method for generic assistant append page. Oh, I need to put the uh, instance. Uh, still doesn't give me the walkthrough, which is a little bit strange. Also, it doesn't seem to respect the title that I'm trying to give it either. Page header image, page side image, page title. That's cool. Um, is there like a set page title? Okay. And there's a widget that represents the page. Sets a title for page. Title is displayed in the header area of the assistant when page is the current page. Well, let's try that really quick. I'm just curious to see what these things do because, you know, we need some of this stuff anyway. Uh, so it's assistant set page title. I'm guessing that will be real. Set page title. And we're passing in the assistant, the page, and then the title. All right, so let's try page two as well. Hey, there it is, page one, page two. I can't change them, I don't know why but it does work. So um, maybe there is, oh, okay, page one is a title here. Interesting that it does that. And it, it also page one is here as well. So um, something like that. And once we get this figured out, we can uh, try to build some abstractions on top of all this. I really don't like the placement of these buttons. I wonder if there's a way to change it to be at the bottom instead.
All right, so assistant. Um, there may be a way to set the state of a page. Set current page. Uh, oh, set page complete. Okay. Let's try that because that might allow me to proceed to the next page. Set page complete. And then I'm going to set that to, uh, I'm guessing it's just hash T. Okay, there's next. Boom. Okay, now we're on page two. So we have to set the page to complete so that it's possible to navigate forward. Now we're getting the navigation buttons in the header bar as well. That's good. I wonder what uh, is necessary to make the application capable of quitting because right now I can't actually close it, which is pretty interesting. Signals, close. Close button of a summary page is clicked or the apply button of the last page is clicked. Something is preventing it from closing. Oh, use header bar. Ah. What does that mean? I would prefer the action area because I don't like this header bar thing. It sucks. Integer property, but you should only set it to true or false. That's not what this says. <laughs> Gotta love documentation. All right, so use header bar. Let's try that. Um, I'm gonna guess this is G true, because I saw something like that being defined as constants. Ah, uh, unbound variable. Oh, actually, no, I want that to be false. Let's just do false. I don't know if that's gonna translate. Nope. All right, we gotta go back to the REPL. And maybe we can use uh, apropos. False if exception, G underscore. No, I know I saw some G stuff. Maybe it's not getting pulled in. Hmm. All right, let's see what the docs for uh, GI says. Constance. You know, I might need to pull these in somehow. Oh, did I see Boolean? Booleans. Oops. I wish I could do this use type libs. Cause I feel like I'm missing something. Yeah, I think they are a little bit. I wonder if I should use type libs on this glib. I wonder if it expects me to... Let's try this. Um... Whoops. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so G... No. There we are. G type... Hmm. So that's types, but I need to have a uh, Boolean. Where was it? True or false? Is that just one? Oh, it's an int. I'll just give it uh, zero. Eh? Let's not make it complicated. How about that? 
Uh, oh, cool. So uh, cancel and next are here at the bottom. However, we've lost that nice uh, title bar up at the top. Maybe that's okay, though. Maybe that's something that we can uh, manage ourselves. So far, it's not looking too bad. Still can't cancel it, though. I don't know how do people feel about that. Um, the header bar thing, I don't know why GTK has that uh, UI paradigm. It just feels wrong to me. But if people think it's better to have that title bar there, then I could leave it back in. All right, so let's move on. So now that we've seen that it is possible to uh, put some pages into the wizard, uh, let's see if we can put some controls on the page. So let's do this. Define uh, make locale page. So I will, hey, wait a second. Let page. Now this probably needs to be some kind of container that uh, can be put in as a page. I need to investigate what is given to us. Classes. Sorry, like a page class. Page setup. No, that's for printing. Print context. Okay, so panel. What else would it be called? I mean, obviously there's like widget, but that seems too low level. Uh, it would just be container. Uh, user interface is constructed by nesting widgets inside widgets. Container widgets are the inner nodes in the resulting tree of widgets that contain other widgets. You might have a GTK window containing a GTK frame containing a GTK label. If you wanted an image instead of a textual label, you might want to replace... Okay, so uh, frame. A bin that surrounds its child with a decorative frame and an optional label. Okay, I like that. So it can have a child. Let's try that. Um, make GTK frame. And is it just, okay, frame label. No, that's an ID. What is the field for that? Probably just label, right? Yeah, label. Okay, cool. All right, so label would be um, choose locale. Yeah, it, we're gonna be using sway though, I lag continuously. So uh, there won't be a title bar. So that could be one thing that influences our decision on that. Uh, this is wrong. Okay. What am I doing? So we've got the frame. We also need to have, um, what the, what is going on? Is Lispy on? No, what is happening? Stop. Thank you. All right, so we have page, um, content. So it's not frame. It's container. A container just has children, I guess. But is there a way, there's got to be like a grid or something to um, align children. Grid. No. Oh, classes. I'm not in the right place. Grid. Grid. Container, which arranges its child widgets in rows and columns with arbitrary positions and in horizontal vertical uh, spans. I almost got demonetized. What did I do? Did I say bad word again? All right. 
Okay, so there's a lot of functions here, insert row. Okay, so we could probably tweak around on that, but I don't really want to deal with that at the moment. I kind of want there just to be a stack. Is there like a stack class? Stack, yeah. Only, whoa, no, that's not right. Huh, oh, it, this must be the new thing. Shows only one of its children at a time. Does not provide a means for users to change the visible child. Use a stack switcher. Sounds like a <laughs> writing scheme is demonetized enough. Yeah, that's true. So uh, this may be the new thing for wizard type interfaces. Stack sidebar, stack, stack switcher, that kind of thing. But let's not deal with that right now. Status bar, status icon, table. I'm looking for just a plain panel. So let's see. Pained, two panes arranged horizontally or vertically. Okay, don't want that. Layout. Blank slate doesn't do anything except paint a black background. It can contain child widgets, all right. Not exactly what I want. Probably just grid, I guess. Drawing area. Okay, I've scanned through everything. Um, yeah, I was looking for something that's more more simple, but I guess I just add rows into a grid. What if I just do that? I'll, I'll create a grid instance. So I need to have GTK frame and also GTK grid. All right, so we got a frame here with a label. And I'm just gonna leave that uh, empty for now. And I can, oh, I need to set the parent actually. Parent is page, page. All right, let's just do that and see what it, what it looks like. And uh, for page two, I will then call make cal page instead. Let's run it. Can't change to it. Okay, okay, choose locale. Frame is kind of freaky looking, I don't know. Not exactly what I had in mind. So what if I go back and, is there anything like a header? Header, header bar. Children be placed at the start or the end. Title, subtitle be displayed. I wonder if that's that header bar thing that we see. If you can put it as a uh, child of something. Can add typical window frame controls as a custom title bar widget. Hmm. All right, maybe let's just um, go back to what we had before with the actual header up there. I don't know, whatever. We'll stick with this for now. And uh, the next thing we wanna do for choosing a locale is to have a dropdown. 
with all the locales. And this is a point where we'll have to go to the geek source to find the code that uh, enumerates those locales that gets displayed in the installer UI. And we'll figure out how to do that in just a second. Uh, drop down, selector, um, let's see, there's a color chooser, combo box. Part of the problem we have here is I don't know what all the names of the common widgets are in GTK. I mean, there's a list box. Vertical container that contains GTK list box row children. Rows can be dynamically sorted and filtered. We don't need that. Uh, tree view. Hey, Judy. Okay, that's one thing. There's gotta be a name for this. GTK drop down control. It exists. I must, oh, it's in four. What about three? Did I not search for that? Yeah, okay, it must only be in four. What was it called before? Hmm. Combo box. Ah. Whatever, okay. That's not what I think a combo box is, but I guess that's it for GTK3. Cool, so let's go back to um, here and uh, we'll look at the combo box docs. Combo box. Combo box. Choose from a list of valid choices. Model view pattern, list of valid choices specified in the form of a tree model. And the display of these choices can be adapted to the data in the model using cell renderers. Oh boy. So how do you create a uh, tree model then? Tree model filter. Yeah, that's weird. You do not link to tree model somewhere. Where is tree model? It's an interface. Struct. There we are. Should be writing this in TK. I don't know about that. You want to show me how to create a tree model? Man, they just want to make everything difficult. Uh, 
All right, so maybe, maybe a list is better. List box, list box, vertical container. Let's just go with that. I'm getting sick of this. It said something about um, if you use add, there's an add function. Okay, a GTK container add. It's supposed to only have GTK list box row children, but you can add any kind of widget via GTK container add. And a widget will automatically be inserted between the list and the widget. But maybe I can look at the uh, the row also, which should be inside of the structs list, I would guess. List box row, a row. Tree and list widget overview. Oh, cool. Creating a model, this is better. Whew. I don't want to have to do all this stuff. Um, no. Okay, it's not there either. Oh, there it is. List box row. What attributes does it have? Properties. Selectable, activatable. Mm. And I'm guessing you can just put a child in there. So list box row probably can have a label inside. That sounds fun. All right, so uh, GTK three examples. I believe this is the repo I had found before. Maybe not. Let me see. Let's go back to the show notes. Different repo. All right, so this is the assistant that I saw. Oh, a V-Box. Uh-huh. Cool, this is actually useful. Okay, it seems like I need to be setting up signals for these things, so whenever someone clicks, clicks cancel, um, I can close a window. That explains that issue. Vertical box with a label. Uh, box packing. We append a page. Uh, set the page title. Set the page type. Cool. All right. That's useful. Set page complete true. Good. See you, Case. All right. So GTK box new. Let's go check out the box documentation here. This is a plain old box, apparently. Um box v box container that organized child widgets into a single column that's what i was looking for before it has been deprecated you can use gtk box with a orientation set to vertical so uh we'll use gtk box instead So instead of a grid, um, and it says orientation, it's GTK orientation vertical. We'll see if that works. In fact, let's uh, let's find out. Oh, we also need to make this a. Let's get rid of that. All 
Uh huh. Grapple, please. Gal plus TK after this because it might be easier to use. How does TK look though? Does it ha actually use um, GTK as a back end or has it got that old style UI? Because I, I kind of want something that looks up to date, modern. GTK orientable, orientable. Let's pull that in, orientable. You can use themes, okay. Orientable, okay, so we got the orientable uh, stuff here. Is orientation an enum, I wonder? It's an accessor, okay. How do we get to... Box. That's really weird. Be nice to know where that comes from. Oh, is it actually a type? How about that? Orientation to symbol, okay, interesting, symbol to orientation, uh-huh. Uh, horizontal. Is that real? No, okay. It seems like it might be right, actually. So, can I just pass a symbol in? Cool. So let's try this then. Uh, go back to this. And here, I'll just use a symbol of vertical. That might work. Boom, all right. So on the locale page, we don't show anything yet, but if I were to add a um, child to it, then it should work. Uh, list box. Okay. That should be enough for that. Also need to go drop in a uh, list box there. I forgot. Okay, oh. Okay, that's it, right there. Cool. Why can't I click on the name? Okay, it seems like something is here, but it's just not showing up fully. All right. Uh, the fact that 
it doesn't have any items in it and it's a vertical stacking container which means that it's going to be have effectively no height until something gets put in there cool so now i need to figure out a way to put uh, stuff in the list i believe what it told me before is that i can just stuff things in as a container and it will somehow do the right thing but i'm kind of kind of doubtful of that but let's try to put a well list box row doesn't let me put text in but maybe if i just put a, a label widget so gtk container add we have container we need container So if I were to say container add, is that right? Let's go find out. Okay, here's container and we'll check out the methods. Actually there's add, add right there. Okay, that's it. So container add make GTK label uh, label. I need to make some helper functions for this stuff to make it a bit easier. Uh, clean gone. I don't know what I'm saying here. So we're trying to add an item to that list. Let's see if it crashes. Uh, no applicable method for generic container add. Uh, I think I forgot a parameter. Yeah, pay, uh, no, list box, there we go. That's why there's no applicable method because I did not put an instance there. Cool, so that is a selectable item. That's a good start. So then, uh, let's see. Now that I can actually show things in a list, let's try to find how Geeks loads up all the locales. So in the Geeks code base, I believe it's under Geeks uh, or not, GNU, installer. And there's locale.scm. Let's look at the exports. Supported locales to locales. Where can I get a list? Turn the configuration field for locale, okay. It's not what I was expecting to see. Newt is where um, the actual UI is for the stuff. List box selection page, locale language, languages. It's an A-list. Run locale page. There's some stuff in here that would have to be duplicated probably. Languages has to come in from somewhere. It must be coming in from locale. I would guess languages. No. Uh, define languages. Hmm. Oh. Nope. What about a... Uh, nope. It's gotta be a little bit more. GNU build locale. I see. 
And that is read supported locales. That's system locale. Hmm. Okay, run language page. Uh, locale language supported locales. Where is that coming from? Cal page. ISO, uh, what is that? ISO th six three nine languages. Okay, there's a loader in here somewhere. Where is this? Like a G expression? Return a G expression that runs a locale page of installer and install the selected locale. That's pretty weird. Language to text. Image UI, uh, I am GUI. Is that I am GUI? Yeah, immediate mode GUI. Ah, uh, well, that's not so easy to do from Scheme. I mean, you'd have to write a wrapper on that, which is not impossible. I've definitely thought about it. I like that library. It's really nice, actually. Where is this coming from? Yeah, I'm looking for a locale page. And I don't actually see it. Um, get called directly with the parameters that. Uh, So locale page is a function. Newt installer. Sorry, people, this is a little bit of a detour. Current installer, newt installer, steps. It's doing a lot of G expression stuff in here. So it's like it's building the installer into the store. That's interesting. Keyboard layout configuration.
Hmm. Okay, this is definitely more complex than I expected. Basically, to uh, access the same information you can get for some of these things, um, it's not directly available because you have to be able to build it through the Geek Store. Sorry, the, the GNU Store or, or through Ge the Geeks Builder. Yeah, GTK is pretty complex, but I guess it's because it's meant to build huge applications. I mean, it's certainly possible to use a simpler UI framework, um, but I think that you won't have the benefit of localization or um, locales, etc. This seems to be the key place, though. Uh, GNU slash installer dot SCM uh, installer program. Return a file like object that runs the given installer. And I, it's curious, like what it, what is this in the end? Program file. So this is like a guile uh, program script installer begin set the default locale to install uh unicode support yeah so this is basically just uh, guile code yep okay so installer builder, this is another file-like, I think, or just a G expression completely. Good to see this though. It's, it's useful to, uh, to see this. I wonder how one would be able to customize this then. So it doesn't have to use Newt, which is the incurses based uh, installer framework. that hmm interesting Yeah, uh, I think the separation is okay because they have all these, uh, let's see, if I go back to the installer folder, there's all these SCM files at the top of the installer folder path. And then there's the newt folder, which basically has the same set of things that are the UI for everything in this folder. So uh, a lot of the stuff is accessible. However, I think it's all done through the lens of newt in this installer to SEM, whenever it does the installer builder, pulls in all the modules, run command in installer, current installer. And what is that steps? Run installer steps, steps, okay. Yeah, it's, it's pretty tightly intertwined here. I mean, if a step is uh, kind of an abstract concept, then sure, we could probably replace it with a GTK based installer, but as it stands, it seems like this is uh, wiring newt logic pretty deeply into the whole process.
And this whole thing is a big G expression. And I think it's ultimately being inserted into this file called installer real, which is a guile script. Program file creates a, a guile script and it ex, uh, executes installer real. And I'm guessing this guile, guile 3.0 latest puts the shebang on the uh, script file for guile 3. It uses ex, uh, exec to launch it. This wrapper effectively just sets the uh, the language environment variable before running it. Okay. So all this code effectively gets executed, but since this is a G expression, some of these things are being evaluated as the expression gets uh, created, I think. Like some of this init get text. But that's also returning a, a G expression, so it's just being spliced in, apparently. And this is pulling in bind text domain. What is that? Hmm. Is that a program? What is this? Was it like a, a command in the, in the Nix daemon? Okay, there's a package called ISO codes and it's pulling in the locale. Let's see, the new store. ISO codes, share, locale. Okay, so there's all the locale files apparently. Uh, Ian. Uh-huh, not very helpful. X keyboard configuration information. System rebel debug. Okay, cool. It's just a bunch of functions being called. You know, this may actually be somewhat abstracted. This may be somewhat abstracted. It's possible one could actually insert a GTK interface inside of this because installer seems to be a um, generic record type that effectively it just it tells you what the interface is these are a bunch of fields for the record type that are that expect procedures that have the uh, expected inputs so probably what we should have done is add code directly to geeks that can launch um this program in fact in this folder path there could be another subfolder for the GTK based installer. And it follows a similar uh, process. You just define a new type of installer. And then in installer, there just needs to be a way to parameterize uh, which installer gets chosen. Right now it's hard coded to newt installer, but uh, there's, you know, it's possible that you could 
provide a parameter to installer program to use a different one, I guess. And then in theory, it should be possible to just have exactly the same information that gets given to the newt based installer and just uh, do it that way. So two hours spent on the stream, just poking around, trying to figure out what we can do. I mean, it's I think we learned a little bit about how we could make a GTK based UI with the Guile GI library. But uh, definitely not the right approach, like sort of like the uh, the way that we're establishing that this application. So this does need to be injected into the geek source, but that's okay because Geeks needs this, so starting with Geeks makes sense. The other thing that would be necessary would be to parameterize the final configuration generation. Now let's see if we can figure out what page that is. Let's go back to installer, define record type. Where was that at? Define record installer. There's installer and installer step. So an installer step record is basically an ID associated to a compute procedure. A compute procedure takes exactly one argument and association list containing the results of the previously executed installer steps. Okay. That's a different thing though, it seems. Uh, what was I looking for? Uh, final page, is that it? Uh, dump page, run command, dump page, dump page. Oh, that's for uh, crash dumps probably. What is a report page? Okay, same thing. What is the page for showing the configuration? Proceeding with a final step. No cocktails today, Ashraz. I think uh, I, I bored Summer to the point where she left, so she's not telling us what cocktails she's bringing. Okay, so uh, let's see. Okay, before generating the configuration file, give clients a chance to do things such as changing the swap partition label. Hmm, that sounds fun. Format configuration, previous steps, result. Where is that format configuration? Where is it defined? Must be somewhere else. In steps, turn the list resulting from an application of the procedure defined in configuration formatter field of installer step on the associated result found in results, okay? Okay, all right, I see. Current installer. Now, this seems like another thing that might be pretty uh, tied up with the newt based implementation. Because you have this list of steps. I guess it's generic, but the configuration formatter for each step is not configurable. So, locale to configuration. We can find it here. Uh, yeah, so basically that, this is what gets inserted into your configurations. If I were to look at dot files, uh, David Will systems, base, locale, it basically inserts that into the final uh, configuration file. 
Same thing for like host name. So, whoops, what did I just do? Uh, where is it? Host name. Host name to configuration. Host name to configuration defined here. Yep, same thing. So it's just like uh, tuples that are being jammed together to create the final configuration file. So that might be pretty coupled to how Geeks works or how, how Geeks configurations are written. So it might be difficult to generalize this to other customizations of Geeks. So it may still be necessary <laughs> to um, not use the same underlying code unless a different approach can be taken entirely. So let me take a look at this. Installer program. This is pulled in to the install. Is this the, uh, the image definition for install? Okay, so installer program is login program. Yep. All right, so here we are. We're, we're making, making the um, installation services list. This does actually make sense. It's sort of like what I had in mind too. So uh, we are setting up a login service. And then where was it? Uh, installer program, login program. So this KMS con, I think is like the kernel mode setting. And for TTY1, it's automatically launching the installer program. And the installer program is a guile script that is created by this G expression here. So actually, it does seem like one could have a different entry point, not use the same installer program, but maybe use a different implementation that kind of duplicates a lot of this, but is able to switch out the uh, installer steps. In fact, if you took the installer steps. Oh, okay. So installer steps is a function that gets, that gets called here. If installer program had um, keyword parameters and you could change installer steps, then you could override the, beha or override the behavior of the default installer steps. So it's possible that this could be actually be changed to um, make it configurable. I think that's doable without breaking the existing code. And then um, someone else could come along and make their own installation image based on this uh, installation services function. Let's, let's take a look real quick. Installation services. And there it is right there. Installation OS. So installation OS. This is the entire OS configuration for the installation image. And then um, installation services is here. That's coming from that function that we just saw here, which then calls the installer program. So you could pretty easily customize this, I think. You could just replace that uh, KMS con service type, leave everything else more or less the same way it is in theory. And then um, use a different installer program that has its own set of steps, which each, each of which have their own configuration exporter, I guess you could call it, as well as a different installer. So it's not the new installer. So you could actually have a GTK based installer. And the way that it's all set up, I think there's like an init function. So you could use that to launch the installer. Also, the installer could uh, launch Sway or some part of this whole um, setup could launch Sway and then the login program could be the installer script. There's like the greet D with uh, WL greet. Is that right? 
that you can launch a sway session and then launch some arbitrary program. So anyway, uh, I can see a path toward making this work. Just not exactly what I thought whenever I first started this. Hello, Fred. Okay, so uh, that was a lot of investigation today. Obviously, we didn't get really anywhere near where we would need to make an installer, but I think that I now see where all the information comes from and how one might actually inject a new installer UI into the existing code base where most of the logic could be reused, I think. So maybe that's something I can experiment with uh, as time goes on. If, well, there needs to be, actually, I think one could, could possibly copy and paste a lot of this code into Crafted Geeks without having to make any changes to the Geeks installation code. I think that, that it, it could be done out of band and then eventually merge back in. So maybe maybe there's some ex, uh, experimentation that could be done here. Okay. Tuckstock says, uh, not relevant to the video, but are you planning any videos, not live streams? I've been missing some of your more condensed focus content. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to make some videos, but uh, I find it hard to actually sit down and uh, record any. So I hope I get some out soon, but I can't really promise anything at the moment because I'm a little bit focused on other things. Plus I'm taking care of a baby. <laughs> at the same time, so it's a little bit more difficult. Okay, well, that's a little bit disappointing today, but uh, I'm, I'm still happy with what I learned. Hopefully, you know, if you were watching this the whole way through, you learned something too about GTK and Guile GI and maybe Guile, maybe Geeks. A lot of stuff here. If you're interested in this concept of having a graphical Geeks installer, definitely let me know. Um, cause I'm certainly looking for people to hack on this with, I, I should probably like send a, an email to the geeks devel uh, alias as well and let them know about it. But, uh, yeah, anyway, thanks a lot everybody for watching today. Um, I'll remind you again, send your call for proposal for Emacs conf, uh, 2023 it should be a lot of fun. I am thinking about making a talk. I don't know what I will do a talk on yet, but you should definitely think about doing one because I think it's better if more people who haven't done a talk have uh, send one in this time. Lots of people do talks there. You should check out the previous years as well. If you go back to the uh, main website, I think you can see the past conferences. You can even go to the 2021 and uh, where is the list? Schedule. You can find my talk here. There's a lot of other talks by people you probably recognize. So maybe you will be one of those in 2023. Cool. So uh, I hope you all have a great weekend. Um, join us in the System Crafters Matrix slash IRC, systemcrafters.net slash uh, community is the place to learn more about that. We have a lot of fun chatting there. Uh, you can figure out how to join that stuff. And uh, until next time, happy hacking. We'll see you.